The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to December 30th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Perseverance Rhodes. And I know that we should all be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. And, of course, that means that you and I, we can see the good in any set of circumstances. Because we know, you and I, we know that life happens for us, not to us. Hope everyone out there had a great uh, Monday, a magical Monday. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything we can to have a terrific Tuesday as each of us prepare for the uh, new year out there. Remember, if you're trying to break through, it just requires three elements. This is the recipe for breaking through to anything. You've always got to remember that you've got to change your strategy. That's right, because the strategy that we've got employed has gotten us to where we're at right now. So if you're trying to break through, you've got to make a tweak to that strategy. Number two, you've got to change your story because, you see, each of us, we tell ourselves a story. That story usually backs us into the corner of where it is that we're at. Number three, you just simply have to change your state. That means you've got to change your physiology. You've got to sit up. You've got to stand up. You've got to put those shoulders back, no matter how bad you're feeling. And folks, I don't ask you to do things that I wouldn't do out there, so just simply you know, take a nice deep breath of air out there. Focus on what it is that you want. Make sure you use words that are going to empower you to get you through to that breakthrough. Hey, the thing that's most important that I want you to know is that I am grateful for your presence here today. And that means I'd love to hear from you. So give me a call at 877-927-6648. Internationally, you can reach out to us at 727-445-1044. This is Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we got Dow Futures trading off about 40 points, trading on at 17,941. S&P Futures down 6, trade at 2,079. NASDAQ off 11 points at 4,299.75. Uh, King dollar on the move to the downside this morning off uh, 226 ticks, trade out at $90.27. Goldilocks on the move this morning up 16 bucks, giving uh, taking back the gain of the losses from yesterday. She's trading at $11.97. Uh, you've got uh, silver trading up uh, 26 cents, trading at $16.04 pennies. Light sweet crude back 21 cents, trading out at 53.40. Natural gas did have a, a decent day yesterday, a little reversal yesterday. We'll take a look at that giving back a few of its uh, gains. The sea of red uh, across the board, both in Asia and Europe. Asia last night, Europe this morning. The DAX is up 122 points. She's trading at 98.05. The FTSE is uh, down uh, 78 points, trading at 65.55. Let's look in on the FTSE here real quickly. So the FTSE uh, today, it's a daily chart that we're looking at. Yeah, giving you a nice, big, old, uh, bearish and golfing candle. In fact, uh, if we were to close here today, come on, expand for us. There we go. This is in essence, taken back all of its gains uh, through nearly December the uh, 22nd. If it closes below today, uh, 65.45, and you're at 65.54. So, you know, you got about another uh, 9, 10 points to the downside. Then it'll take back everything from that time period. Now, let's just take a look at retracements here inside the uh, FTSE. Let's take a look at the retracement off of the high, <clears throat> excuse me, the high session out here from November 21st down to the low on uh, the uh, 16th of uh, December. Interestingly enough, it's a .786 retracement. So the FTSE, if it can gain momentum to the downside, actually, you can uh, make the case that it uh, would have formed the C point yesterday of an A to B equals CD to the downside. We'll take things one moment at a time. Let's look at the uh, DAX, see what the DAX is doing out here. Uh, the DAX, a uh, little bear separating line this morning as it gapped down from yesterday's uh, close. Um, not as much damage inside of the uh, DAX. The FTSE, yes. Let's take a quick peek here as long as we're over in the international markets. Let's go check in on the um, uh, on the Nikkei. Nikkei down 279 points here last night. Uh, so what is it doing? 
<clears throat> really just consolidating up at these highs out here. So I don't see too much. Uh, I don't have volume here, but I don't see too, too much damage inside of the uh, Nikkei. Let's look at the Hang Seng. The Hang Seng off a little over 1% last night, down 272 points. Um, you know, bearish and golfing. Let's go take a look at its retracement from high to low out here. This is the Hang Seng that we're taking a look at. So we're looking at the high from November 17th down to the low that was put in on uh, the uh, 17th of December. And, yeah, it's also made a point seven eight six retracement out here. Um, I wish these gaps, I wish I could tell you that these gaps have a lot of meaning, but they, they just simply, they don't to me. There's too many gaps out here for it to have any kind of, um, any kind of, uh, what do I want to use, uh, significance of probability. How about that for terminology? Let's look at the Shanghai, then we'll go take a look at our markets out here. The Shanghai uh, last night, even though it closed down, not two points, no big deal out there. So virtually unchanged. Okay, so back to our market. So how are we going to do this? What do, well, let's do this like this, this way first. Let's take a look at a couple things that we're actually moving this morning, not so much our futures market. We'll come back to that. But let's go take a look at gold. Let's look at silver. Let's go take a look at light, sweet, crude, natural gas. So if we look at natural gas this morning off about uh, five cents. And yesterday when we, took, when we took a look at it, you know, coming in from a couple of uh, emails, uh, listeners that uh, were asking, hey, one of the questions was, is natural gas formed a bottom? Here's what we know about natural gas. Number one, let me just add one more tool to my uh, chart out here. Let's take a look at the relative strength indicator. There we go. Okay. So now we've got the uh, we've got volume. We've got uh, momentum indicator. We've got the A to B equals CD to the downside. So we know that nat gas uh, formed has formed uh, may have completed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now it didn't get all the way down to that uh, to that one to one extension, which would have been uh, where which would be down at the two ninety two ish uh, level. Again, this is the March two thousand fifteen contract that we're taking. Like, but you did get a bullish reversal signal. Uh, yesterday, we'll see if there's follow through today. Follow through today means that you do not want to see natural gas close. But if you are long, or if you're trying to, you know, somehow trying to time this, what you don't want to do is see natural gas get back below, get back below three dollars and eleven cents on the uh, March contract for 2015. You're trading at three fourteen right now, so a lot of time left in the trading session. Why? Because if it does get back there, it says yesterday's bullish reversal was nothing more than a uh, overbought or oversold uh, bounce condition with that relative strength indicator getting down to that 28 level back on uh, December the uh, 26th out here. So at this stage, it's a little bit suspect, and that's what's going on inside of uh, the natural gas contract. If we go look at uh, Goldilocks out here, gold's up 15 bucks right now. Gold is uh, trying to uh, take out that short-term trend line out here. That short-term trend line being the one that's coming off the August 14th high. Uh, the uh, next touch point is October 21st. We use that as a significant line of uh, resistance and or support, in this case here, more so resistance, primarily because of the uh, big volume day as well as wide price spread day on December 1st. We're priced up right at that trend line. So it's an important trend line. We know that so far gold has gotten back below there, and then each day when it's tried to bust through to that trend line, it came back through uh, that trend line back here on December the 16th. Each time that it's tried to, intra intraday, it's had some, some nice spikes out here. They just simply have not held. Today is going to be another test of that area. It's also a test of some horizontal resistance out here. That's your TAS market profile box, the market profile high, 11 98.90. We're trading 11.97.10 uh, as we speak right now. Failure to uh, get above this level, especially with the U.S. dollar index, you know, trading lower. And what I'm going to say is, you know, take that U.S. dollar index and put it in a separate chart and trade that. Just simply trade the gold chart. Let's stop with the correlations out here because they just really aren't, uh, they're not tick for tick when we take a look at uh, gold. And uh, just simply, let's just uh, stay focused on what is the gold chart doing and have no other influencing factors out there. And I believe that we will be better off doing that. So if gold's unable to uh, close above this resistance level, says to me that uh, especially if we were to close back below 1181, 1182, uh, to be exact, that could be the B point of a A to B equals CD to the downside, then says you can move down to the 1157 between now and uh, you know between now and uh, tomorrow maybe even between now and uh, between now and Friday out here we'll see um, so however if you get above 11 if you get above 1199 we'll have to get that uh, that uh, monkey song I'm a believer out there uh, because then you will be back above that uh, trend line, and I say, okay, you can uh, most certainly take a stab. Now, stab at the alongside of uh, gold. Now, what you really want to be paying attention to, 
And this is where, you know, come tomorrow, December 31st, a lot of people may be just kind of sleeping at the uh, switch out here. Don't be sleeping at the switch when it comes to taking a look at what's going on inside of, uh, inside of the markets out here. And inside of uh, gold, what you'd want to do is you'd want to really see it break through that, uh, that white trend line. That's coming all the way back to the high on July 10th. And then, you know, uses your next touch point out here, the uh, August 14th high. You see clo gold close above that level, um, then, then you really have something. I wish I could do it on this chart here, but maybe there's some other charts that you can see on the Internet. Uh, Tom certainly has that chart. And last week on Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe it was Wednesday when we, uh, we uh, was fortunate enough he, we did the show together, the second hour of the uh, Trader's Ed show. Um, what we did was we took a look at gold priced out in euros. Remember, you know, gold is priced out in U.S. dollars when we take a look at where things are trading at. But, you know, people are buying gold with euros and yuan and, you know, everything else, right? And it was really the uh, gold chart priced in euros that I believe actually gives us the best picture because what that has been doing is that has been consolidating. And the consolidation top inside of gold is about 1,000 euros. I think just slightly less than that. That's where it's priced out at versus here. U.S. dollars were priced out at 1181. You can do the conversions yourself out here. My belief is that if we see gold get above that, that's when we start to see a real breakout inside of gold. That's a sideways consolidation move. There's going to be trading desks around the world, especially those that look at things priced in euros, and that will go ahead and garner their attention out here. So that is uh, truly what I see taking place. And, and so, you know, Go try to figure that out because I believe that is the better of all the charts that we're taking a look at when we take a look at the metals out there. Just some food for thought. If we take a look at the silver out here, we know that silver, with regard to its trend lines, has been better than gold. That's what we're going to see here right now in the case of silver. And that's just that trend line coming back into the July 11th time frame out here. Uh, use your next touch point, that little shooting star around August the 28th. Of course, that uh, entire trend line also uh, contains the move on December 1st to the upside out here, so it's a good trend line at this stage. So silver has just been breaking that trend by moving sideways, and that's never floated my skirt. Maybe it floats your skirt out here, but then when you move sideways to break a trend, I'm kind of like, nah, that's, uh, you know, okay, yeah, great, you broke the trend by moving sideways out there. No, you want to see a trend being broken with conviction, and sideways action is not conviction out there. So that takes care of uh, natural gas. That takes care of, we didn't take a look at Light sweet crude. Of course, light sweet crude trading out at 53.45 out here. What we know about natural, what we know about light sweet crude is that uh, at this stage of the game wants lower price. And the lower price that it wants is that 0.786 retracement long term. 786 retracement, and that's around $50.67. Can it get lower than that? It most certainly can. But that looks like where uh, Black Gold Texas T is headed to. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, moving in the pre markets out here, ticker symbol NDRM, Neuroderm Limited, closed at 618, uh, trading out right now. Uh, two bucks to the upside, so that's a pretty decent move out there. That's like a 30% move. So uh, looks like they've got some positive top line results on a phase two trial out here. You got GoPro moving to the upside. It closed at 64.74, up a couple bucks as well. Um, GLD is trading higher, of course, with gold trading up 16 bucks. Uh, that is to be expected. Nugget GDX, they're all trading a bit higher this morning. Um, to the downside, uh, Sibio. CVEO is a ticker symbol. Uh, looks like uh, they're guiding below their estimates. They whew, getting cut in half. Uh, closed at eight twenty-seven. Right now, trading below five bucks. Right now, Royal Dutch Shell uh, PLC that uh, closed. Uh, well, the B shares closed at seventy ninety-eight. They're trading at sixty-nine bucks uh, right now. Other than that, nothing really significant to the downside. Apple down just to. Yeah, just a hair, just a smidgen out there. So nothing to worry about on uh, that uh, stage. If we take a look at our futures market out here, let's go look at the uh, – so here are the uh, four corners of the uh, world. Uh, let's do this. The upper left-hand corner is the NASDAQ. That's a 120-minute time frame. The upper right-hand corner is the ES Mini on the 120-minute time frame. Let's start with the S&P futures out here. Let me go ahead and get rid of uh, this. So in the ES Mini – 
Uh, let me just do this. Let me come back here. Let's look at the 30-minute chart. You know, what it's been doing here, it's really been consolidating. It's been consolidating, you know, with the consolidation lows are right around the 2076 type mark out here. So we use 2007. Well, the exact number that we should use out here, I don't know about exact, but let's use the, uh, let's use the price point of two there. Yeah, let's use 2076. Here's what we know about the ES mini, trading below perigee as we speak. 2076 is the level of support. If the ES mini breaks 2076, then we're likely to see a, a price target. Let's go take a look at an A to B equals CD to the downside. That gives us a price point of about 2073 to 2070 out there. And that's what I would expect if, in fact, you know, which is not much, right? To, and and it got to kind of expect maybe not much out here, you know, as far as the market trying to they trying to keep the markets higher, it, it, the expectation should be that the markets will trade higher tomorrow. The markets will trade higher on uh, Friday. The markets will trade higher even on Monday out there. So you know this is this is this is this is what I'm seeing at the moment. Yeah, a lot of trouble of uh, price wise as we took a look at the charts over in Asia and Europe this morning. And uh, I'm not discounting that the things can't otherwise happen here. I just think that it's uh, not the likely scenario. Maybe today, a bit of a pullback, and that pullback, that A to B equals CD to the 2070, but, you know, this is called 2067. A move to 2067 probably becomes a short-term uh, buy inside of the S&P uh, futures out there. Otherwise, nothing really that is uh, moving a lot lower inside of the market. So your expectation, if we're going to set your expectation, which is really one of the things that I like to do here on the show, and I like to do it with uh, conviction. I'm figuring that you don't really want to listen to somebody who does. You may not like what it is I have to say, but at least if I got conviction behind it, then you at least know that uh, it's what I believe out there. Now, if we take a look at, and so that's uh, that's what we want to do. If we take a look at uh, some of the currency pairs out here in the next uh, minute, let's go take a look at the uh, euro itself, see what it is uh, doing out here. The euro gar garnering a bit of strength out here, putting a bit of weakness into the uh, U.S. dollar index, but come on, let's be real. If we take a look at the euro US dollar out here, there ain't no reversal signal. And without a reversal signal, without a bullish reversal, much like we took a look at inside natural gas, then the preponderance of evidence says that the euro wants to move lower. That lower would take it to the 1.2072 level out here. If, on the other hand, the euro can garner some real strength today, close above yesterday's open, 1.2184, we'll call it 1.2185, then you've got a, a bullish engulfing candle, something that we haven't seen here for a while. In fact, the last time we saw one of those was back on December the 4th out here. But otherwise, if we don't see that, then what the euro wants to do is the euro wants to continue trading lower out there. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, uh, really not a ton of uh, movement out here this morning. What we know about that is that resistance now is the bottom of this hammer candle, November the 14th, that low at 1.5593 out there. Euro Japanese yen. Our guide to liquidity in the marketplace, well, if you're wondering why the futures are trading lower, just take a look at the Euro-Japanese yen. She, too, is uh, trading lower. Now, the Euro-Japanese yen uh, is trying to uh, deal with this little swing point here from December 16th. We see it close below that 144.96. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, isn't as rosy of a picture as it should be. But until then, we'll assume we're just seeing just a normal little shoving back and forth. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
authorization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender who says you can't take it with you TFNN says you can with your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands no special apps to download no subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams we say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com We're off to the races. We got the Dow off 32 points. Trade out 18,006. S&P down 5 at 2,085. Composite off 10. She's trade at 47.96. Russell off 3 points. The DAX down 121. FTSE off 66 uh, pennies. Uh, $66, I should say. Gold up 15 bucks. Silver up 23 pennies. Leading the charge. The upside is that Neuroderm up 37%. Up $2 and change. GoPro up uh, 2 bucks. That's up 4%. Uh, Amberella Inc. up 2% uh, up a buck. I'm just trying to find things other than the gold or gold shares out here. Candy Technology, KNDI, up 3%. That's 48 cents. No big deal out there. Sibio Corp, uh, the big loser to the downside, 42% haircut out there. Juno Therapeutics. J-U-N-O down 3% this morning. I don't think that's much of a uh, big deal out there. And Anadarko Petroleum up 55 cents. Schlumberger down 55. Let's go take a look at that XLE out here. 
uh, the XLE, the energy sector for the uh, S&P 500 off uh, 57 cents right now, trading out at 79.83. Uh, volume so far this morning, uh, 813,000 shares. Now, the XLE, what it has done is uh, it completed. You know, remember if you were listening on the first hour, we took a look at the, uh, the first segment, I should say. We took a look at the... Uh, uh, natural gas, current contract for natural, the March contract for natural gas out there. And uh, we showed it's A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. We have the same looking uh, style pattern out here inside the energy sector. That's coming off of the high from November the 21st. That's your A point, your B point down here was December 1st, makes about a 37% retracement. How do you so? 0.382 retracement. Does that on December the uh, 3rd? That high was 82.61. Goes ahead and makes a B line. The one to one price projection was $72.06. We actually saw a low on December 16th of 72.51. So it completed that pattern. It also created and formed a key reversal session on that trading session. Had some fairly nice move movement of volume wise to the upside on December 17th 62 million shares out there it's lost its energy of course we're in that sh light uh, trading uh, time of the uh, year out here uh, you know December 23rd 26 million shares yesterday 18 million shares out here uh, so it has certainly uh, kind of lost its way however does have this nice reversal pattern. It's not exactly as if it's given it up on price either. Now, retracement-wise, let's just take a look at this A to B equals CD pattern. Let's see what it has done retracement-wise. It is still above the 0.382 retracement. 0.382 retracement area is where you expect to see folks get off of the elevator, the escalator on the way up. Uh, that was priced out at 79.08. You're priced at uh, 79.58 as we speak right now. 78.10 ought to be a pretty decent level to uh, of support inside of uh, the energy sector. The XLE, if it gets below 78.10, then that says okay, maybe the move to the upside, in fact, was over. But so far. You know, just kind of hanging tough out here, uh, really just moving sideways, and that is the energy sector. If it can muster some strength, no reason for it to not go test the 83.14-ish level, get up to the uh, 0.68 retracement of that A to B equals CD down pattern that we uh, just took a uh, look at. Uh, let's look at uh, some other things out here. So let me try to, try to go in a decent order. Okay, let's go. Uh, Let's look at some of the uh, gold mining stocks out here. Let's start with Rand Gold, G-O-L-D. That's up a buck right now. What is it doing? Uh, nothing, really. Just simply consolidating uh, sideways out here. So nothing uh, big going on inside of Rand Gold. It's got some, you know, it has some support down here at the uh, November 11th, I'm sorry, November 5th high, which is $61.37. But basically not doing much below its market profiles. Nothing that looks really substantially bullish inside of Rand Gold Resources, G-O-L-D. Let's look at uh, Gold Corp, GG. It's a ticker symbol. Again, it's a daily chart that we're looking at. That's up on uh, 565,000 shares of 46 cents right now. Doesn't look a whole lot different than the uh, Rand Gold chart. In its trade at 1824, the reality is that inside of Gold Corp, it doesn't truly reveal a whole lot to us until we get above the uh, 2142 level, in my opinion. Now, let's uh, since we're about to end the month here, let's switch over to a monthly chart. For Rand Gold, I'm sorry, for uh, for Gold Corp, and get some type type of feel for what it's actually doing out here. So I'm going to get rid of that 2142 for the time being. It shows up on my screen. Okay, so now we're back here. Now there's in a monthly basis. There's actually nothing that looks great about this uh, stock chart. Um, if we take a look at in October of 2008, that's what it's trading into. Now the volume there, the the the, the good the good news is it doesn't have anywhere near that volume. You're got, what, another day and a half worth of trading. You're only at 200 million shares, and it's traded into a swing that's got twice that volume. It's got 421 million shares out there. However, it has not tested that low, which is 1384. So should, in fact, um, the, uh, should, in fact, the uh, gold fail at these resistance levels and move down, you could expect a gold corp maybe to go and test that low, 1384. That's quite a bit lower, 1828. So, you know, it's, look, it's trading inside that swing point. We'll just take things one moment at a time. We know it's trading below its market profile out here of 2170. So it's got some work. It's got some chugging to do to the upside. If we take a look at, um, let's see, what else? Let's look at AEM. So Nico Eagle. 
Steel. That's up 77 cents this morning, but we're looking at the monthly chart here. And on the monthly chart, we can see that this thing has done basically nada, zero, zilch, nothing. Um, and, uh, and what I mean by that is uh, you've got a little doji candle for the month. You had one last month as uh, well. You know, maybe it's a more high wave. just depends on where it actually finishes out the uh, session uh, tomorrow. But this thing, uh, you know, has done basically nothing in an entire month's worth of time. So if you've been trading this for the month of December and for the month of November, you've probably got to be pretty darn frustrated um, unless you came in at the very bottom tick out here because uh, Agnico Eagle doing basically nothing. What it is also doing is trading back into that 2008 swing point, November 11th, uh, the November, not the November 11th, the November 2008 swing point. Is it November? No, I'm sorry. It's the October. October. That had volume of 132 million shares. Again, half the volume out here, 56 million shares is what we're going to see here in the month of uh, December. Let's look at, uh, let's do one more out here just to get a, a feel. Um, gold fields. Let's look at gold fields, right? One of the stronger looking equities out here. At least this has had some movement out here. Um, we'll look at the uh, daily chart. So at least in the case of uh, gold fields on a monthly basis here, you know, it's just a consolidation sideways. Real key inside of gold fields looks like is going to be breaking above its monthly profile, 552. Let's remember that 552. Let's switch back to a daily chart here as we take a look at uh, gold fields. Now, this of all the stocks that one should be uh, holding if you are inside the mining uh, market, mining equities out here. Goldfields looks looks as good as anything, maybe better than anything. It's actually uh, getting close to uh, try to take on its swing point here from August 29th at swing point high. You know, those first three stocks we looked at, nowhere near that. Trading above its market profile resistance level, which is uh, priced out at uh, forty four dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, four four fifty out here. You're trading at four fifty three. Okay, woohoo, three pennies. Hey, those are important three pennies out here. But this is a, you know, if gold does take off, this is a place where you would want to be uh, looking, and that is a ticker symbol a GFI. Uh, let's look at a couple of these other uh, equities out here. So we got the Russell two thousand up uh, twenty six pennies right now. And we'll go take a look at longer-term charts. Maybe we'll save, we'll save that for a little bit uh, later. Longer-term charts, meaning we'll take a look at monthly, just to try to get a, a better scenario as to you know, what does 2015 uh, look like. Um, but in the meantime, let's go take a look at a couple of uh, these uh, big movers out here, see what they're doing. Let's look at Apple. Apple is uh, off 50 cents, 2.3 million shares. It's a daily chart that we have on our screen right now. Uh, what is uh, Apple doing? Apple is uh, simply consolidating up towards its highs out here. It's trying to take out its resistance zone. Uh, it's a uh, TAS market profile, 113.99. That looks to be an important area. If you can close above 113.99, no reason for this to not go try to test out its highs. Of course, when we take a look at the... Uh, Composite, the NDX 100 versus the S&P and the Dow, uh, we can uh, see that the uh, that they are not as strong. And of course, Apple is one of the uh, reasons why. You've got the Dow at highs, the S&P at highs. The composite has not been able to take out its December 5th high. The NDX the same. I believe it's December the 5th out there. And of course, so one of the culprits is uh, Apple. The Apple has not been able to get back to its highs. But if it can close above 113.99 out there, that would uh, go a long way to saying, okay, it wants to go ahead and do that. If it can't, look for Apple to move down and then maybe test the 108.84 type level. Right now she's trade at 113.99. Exxon Mobil, of course, this has got a big impact inside of the energy sector, the XLE out here. Um, you know, pulling back yesterday with 9 million shares a day before 10 million shares. That's after moving higher with 38 million shares. It does look to me like ExxonMobil is trying to uh, form the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, those levels where that could uh, easily form if we go from the uh, swing point low out here on uh, December 16th. Whoops. Didn't grab the tool. If we go from that December 16th up to the high inside its most recent high, I should say, inside ExxonMobil, that's December 23rd out here. You know, pulling back to 91.75 would not be out of the question. Of course, if it uh, does that, reverses order from there, it's going to set up a large A to B equals CD to the upside out here. So ExxonMobil uh, not looking too, too shabby. Pulling back on light volume after having a nice little thrust on December the uh, 19th. Uh, let's look at um, what do we got here. So I've just got those two equities. Uh, I'm just trying to go look around here. Let's look at um, 
What should we look? Let's go look at the IWM. Let's go see what it is uh, doing out here. So the IWM yesterday, uh, volume to the upside of uh, 27 million shares. Of course, you know, it's pretty hard to navigate volume during this time of the uh, year out here. Yeah, it's a tool we got to look at, but, you know. We got to kind of, we got to, when we're benchmarking it gets its swing point high, which is July 1st. Now, of course, that was a holiday, right? We're going into uh, July 3rd. So, I figure trading uh, July, July, yeah, July 3rd is a holiday, right? July 3rd was the trading session before the July 4th holiday. But that volume on July 1st, 2014 was 65 million shares. So, we're clearly up into that with uh, light volume. The high, yeah, and that was 120.97. Yesterday's close was. 121.05 so it got above that with light volume we'll see if it can stay above this the real key here is going to be in this 120 area on any kind of retracement can the uh, can the IWM can the Russell 2000 can it uh, stay above those levels because if it does then it's telling us that uh, it's getting ready to break out to the upside that's a big powerful move inside of the uh, Russell 2000 out here. So that's what's going on inside of the IWM. Let's go take a look at uh, a couple of stocks here that are getting, uh, as Tom likes to say, roasted and toasted. That would be uh, Civio Corp, C V E O, taking a 44% haircut as we speak right now. Oh, that's not the first haircut that this thing has uh, taken. It's got a, uh, it got a crew cut. On, on September 29th out here, 2014, 22 million shares to the downside. And this is just a clean shave that's getting here this morning. So this equity, not that long ago, meaning June, 6, June 17th, this had traded up as high as twenty eight dollars and thirty seven cents. Twenty eight thirty seven and it's trading at four fifty eight as we speak right now. That is ugly. That is uh, butt ugly out there. Let's take a look at Emerge Energy Services out here. Not all butts, obviously, being ugly. Uh, EMES is the ticker symbol, down about uh, 5% out here, off $2.81. This thing has also got the ugly factor. Uh, this thing had formed a high out here on August 29th, not that long ago. Uh, that was at a price point of 145 You are trading out at 56 bucks right now, and that's not even low. Four or five, well, two weeks ago, we had a trading December 16th. It got down to 39.90 out there. Whoosh! That is a heck of a move in a short period of time. Uh, and this is one of your, this I think is, yeah, pays a fairly decent uh, dividend out there. You know, who says that you don't need to focus on technically what a uh, stock is doing out, out, out here? Don't just focus on dividends. That's Emerge Energy Services. I think it's a good company, but, man, the shareholders are saying no siree out here. Where is this thing actually headed to? Uh, somebody might ask that question. You know, I don't know. Let's put it on the monthly chart, see if we can get any kind of feel out there. Oh, man, that looks just absolutely horrible out here. Because if you come from, looks like this thing debuted back in uh, April, May of 2013. So if we go from its uh, debut low to the high that was put in here back in August, it's made a point seven eight six retracement, so it's possible forty four ten on EMES Emerge Energy Services is the uh, bottom, uh, but if it gets below forty four ten sixteen forty four would not be out of the uh, question. EMES again is the uh, ticker symbol. Um, let's see what can we do here. Let's look at GoPro. GoPro uh, trading up three bucks. Uh, I'm sorry, two bucks trading up about three percent right now. Of course, uh, I have to get my. Uh, my chart to switch over. We don't want to take a look. There we go. Now let's uh, take a look at the uh, daily chart here for GoPro. I think GoPro is, uh, yeah, this GoPro completed an A to B equals CD to the downside uh, inside of a descending price channel. We suggest that GoPro would uh, try to, uh, let me let me turn off a few tools here. Oh, I've got to do it really quick. Let's see how quickly I can do this. Let's, uh, let's turn off the A to B equals CD. Let's turn off the Fibonacci. Here's where we're paying attention inside of uh, GoPro, this little descending price channel that it's in. GoPro can get above that, which today would be 71, 72 or so. I don't expect we'll see that. But if it can break above that, uh, should head higher. Boy, how about that for a conclusion? This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFN. And we'll be right back, folks. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy. A set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 28, S&P off 4, composite off 8, uh, gold up 24 right now, 24 bucks, uh, silver up 57 cents as we speak. Now, here's this kind of an interesting uh, chart here. I'm taking a look at the uh, Dow right now. You know, off just slightly price-wise, but it's, there's uh, some problems in River City. If you focus on, let me do this here. I'm going to expand the uh, chart a little bit for you so I can expand the bottom of the chart, actually. Let me just do this here. Come on, grab it. Grab and go. Grab and go. Ugh. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I really am. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, 
Well, we're focused on here. Hopefully, you're watching us in HD on Tiger TV. Uh, the bottom portion of my chart is the uh, McClellan uh, price oscillator out here. And what you can see, the reading on it right now, if you can't, uh, if you can't make it out, it's a uh, point two zero. Uh, earlier, when I was just pulling up, was at point one five out here. The, the 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 green line going across my chart out here is the zero line. If the price oscillator gets down below the zero line, and you can take a look at other instances as price. Now, one of the things we pointed out yesterday was this, and you know, like maybe a little bit of trouble in the River City. Uh, the issue was that they started to make some declining tops out here, while prices and that's on the oscillator, while price was actually moving slightly higher. Never really a good uh, divergent uh, sign out here. But what would be actually worth than that is to see the price oscillator actually slip below the zero line. Now, we're not there yet. Um, we may not get there today. If the uh, Dow sells off uh, uh, more, then, then, in fact, we might. And you can see here, if we just come back to this time period, um, this, there was a high that was formed back on uh, September 19, 2014. You remember, remember, that was a high that we were really focused on and paying attention to. Of course, that had a declining price oscillator as, as, as well. But what I just want to point to is that the price oscillator got below zero the very next trading session. That was September 22nd. And it continued to stay below there before it made its lows back in October, October 15th out here. And the question is, is, you know, with the price oscillator being below zero, can you go to higher highs out here? And the answer is no, you can't. So it's really something that we want to uh, pay attention to out here uh, because it could be a, a signal, could be the first signal, um, that uh, maybe, hey, New Year's Eve is going to be, we're going to have a hangover a day early or a few days early out here. So, uh, you know, I won't know till tomorrow morning how this actually uh, trades, how this actually obviously trades and closes out. Out here right now, we've got the uh, Dow is off uh, 32 points. So let's say if the Dow is off 50 points, Pretty good chance, not a guarantee, but pretty good chance that the uh, price oscillator gets below that uh, zero line. And so that would make tomorrow's session really important. Again, the bias is to the upside tomorrow. The bias is to the upside on Monday. The bias is to uh, Friday, I should say. And the bias is to the upside on Monday as well out here. But let's forget about the biases. Let's just uh, utilize the information that the uh, markets provide to us. Now, there's a secondary chart that is worth noting as well, and that is the uh, VIX index. Now, the VIX index, it's 50-day exponential moving average average today priced out at 1552 the VIX index is trading at 1551 so if we take the combination of the perfect storm out here uh, today if the uh, Dow's price oscillator dips below zero that's given us an indication that, uh, okay, it's time for a rest, time for the uh, January swoon to begin swooning a bit early out here if we take a look at the VIX, really the VIX is a measure of volatility inside the S&P 500. So when we that closes above the 50-day exponential moving average, if it does, 1553 is the number. You're at 1560 right now. Then you'd have strike two, so to speak, out here. You'd have two uh, indications of a, a market that says, hey, you know, I'm used to going higher on the uh, 31st. I'm used to that ball not dropping until, you know, midnight out here. Hey, folks, uh, stay tuned. Our tour of the Trader's Edge is up next. Drop to start your day. Have a terrific Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, folks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today.
for watching Tiger TV.